and welcome to the Sunbird Crochet Podcast. My name is Claudia and I'm coming to you from Germany. Easy rider on the highway Station wagon going slow Windows open, you are basking In the bluegrass radio mm -hmm. It is easy now to see you With your hand out on the wind I keep this folded at the corner so that I could not forget it Fold it at the corner So that I could not forget mm. Pink azaleas by your driveway Shade our leisurely goodbye With your arms sweeping the sky It was then I had a knowing You were waving till the bend I keep this folded at the corner So that I could not forget So that I could not forget One finished object, too many works in progress, and quite a lot of incoming. So let's start right away with what is Hildegard wearing? Hildegard has snitched my Aljak sweater, which I finished. I've added both sleeves. Number one is here and here is number two. So that's done. Yeah, and I think uh, whoop, whoop, we both like it a lot. I just might do an enforcement reinforcement here around the neckline because that's quite wide and I don't want to stretch it any further so just a slip stitch all around that neckline will do the trick. The original pattern for the sweater is from a book which I've owned. The author is Sandra Gutierrez who's Nomad Stitches and that was the one uh, I think it's it's a turquoise pink version on the book and in the book and I've chose mine in a maroon color with a color changing yarn for the crochet color work. I've worn this already and it's quite cozy. The sleeves only go up until here so what I will do is I will move it a little bit up like this and then the puff Sleeves will look exactly as they should be. Uh, it will just be perfect, you know. So um, the puff sleeves are actually a good decision. If I push it up and then it's a three quarter type of sleeve. And um, yeah, that's done. 
I'm happy. Ja, Hildegard. Move to the side, please. Hildegard talked to me about wanting to have her own podcast episode. Well, we all have to talk about that. Now, let me show you what else I have for you. Just a quick update. First of all, my Vertices Unite shawl. You have seen it in the intro video that I have frogged this. It's like a game of survival. Which project will survive <laughs> the time between this episode and the next episode? Because my mood is changing all the time and um, I, I'm getting distracted and things get ripped out and frogged. And uh, yes, I will get back to the Vertices Unite shawl eventually sometime in the future, but not right now. I've lost interest in knitting at the moment. Just for a moment, because um, I have other things on my mind. Let me just show you my current whips, which have survived the survival game so far. It is, of course, my lovely Take Two shawl, which I've shown you last time already. I haven't added much. I am now at the slip stitch section before the next textured bit. So I think I've added about this much since last time. But it's not a huge progress. By the way, if I'm hopping in and out or out and in, it's still because I've got the cough and I have to cut this episode now and then to cut it out. I'm still very much in love with my Take Two Show. So that's a little bit of progress on this project. You know by now that the Take Two Shawl is a design by Mariana Müller, who is Sweet Crochet Dreams, a South African designer. Now, on to the next work in progress. It was, it's a new project made out of two old finished projects. You know, I showed you my granny shawl and I've made quite a few. And now I thought about joining them. I've got two triangular shawls. Um, that's my first one. And then I've got another one, um, which I have to work on a little bit so that each of them have the same size. Now this size measured from this tip to the next tip is um, 160 of these little clusters. So 80 until the center and then another 80 to the other tip. And the other one only has, if I count it correctly, 71 till the center and another 71 to the other side. So that's 142, which means that I still have to work on the other one so that it's the same size and then I will join them here at the straight line and then it will turn into a rectangular blanket, I hope. At least that's the plan. But I will keep you updated on that. It shouldn't take too long. But it's just that um, I think a rectangular or a square blanket is more useful than a triangular one um, unless you want to wear it as a wrap but still you can also wear a blanket as a wrap if you're lounging around on your sofa right and also i'm still working on this triangular granny stitch shawl i've added about this much today and these these rows here and uh, this will be the shawl which I'm using as a wrap when I'm sitting on the sofa. 
So even though I'm joining the big ones over there, I will still have a granny shawl. I am rapidly using up all my advent minis and all the minis and leftover yarns, which I've got in my huge project bag. I collect them all in a big bag, including my Ching Fiver advent calendar from last Christmas. It all goes in this project, into this one and into connecting the other two huge granny stitch wraps. Another project which is not yarn related, but which is still a craft, is my patchwork project. You've seen also in the intro video that I was working on that one. I'm still at the stage of joining the little squares to form a big square. It should look a little bit like stars. And I was debating with my mother because this is a generation pro project, um, how to best join them uh, so that I don't lose the look of the stars. But uh, she wants to lay them all out already now. But I first want to finish squares and uh, yeah, we will see how that one goes. Um, I really love the color combinations. I had, what do you call them? These pre-cut little squares. Um, can't remember right now what you call them. Um, two were F William Morris fabrics, two were um, like just plain unicolored uh, fabric by Moda, I believe. And one package I had with Anne of Green Gables uh, fabric, themed fabric. So it all worked quite well together, I think. And uh, yes, I will keep you updated on that. I'm on the patchwork journey at the moment and uh, this leads me to the next section incoming. I am always <laughs> searching around Etsy and I'm looking for what other makers are doing and when it came to patchwork, I was looking for patchwork ideas and I came across uh, an unfinished patchwork project. I don't know how old this is, but I think it's quite old. It's a, it's a quilted patchwork blanket, but it's not yet quilted, so the quilt part is missing, and the lining is missing, or whatever you call it. It's just the top of a quilt, and uh, it's a friendship quilt. So from the looks, and this is, I've ordered this from America. Sorry, I'm all over the place. I need to focus on what I want to say. So I ordered this from America, and... Uh, it's patchwork squares and in the middle of each square is the name of the maker and the city where they came from. And it looks to me like lots of friends did this together. So let me show you just and, and we can talk about it. As I said, I ordered this from a second hand shop or a shop on Etsy which is selling secondhand things. And this was a one of a kind thing. <laughs> so I might have to stand up to show you. Hang on. So this is one of these squares. And there's another one. They're all the same design, but each of these ladies uh, used their own fabric and they made their embroidery some wrote them with wrote their names with a pen some made an embroidery and i still have to iron this this is cross stitch so it's all the same 
squares, so to say. Oh, whoops, this looks different there. That's a different one, right? Or well, maybe not. Maybe it's just, you see, you see, it all looks so different depending on which colors, which fabrics you use. So there is, um, let us see who took, who worked on this. There is Norma Dieselman from Page. This one. And this one is Margie Wallace from Papillon. And then I've got Jan Hatfield from Belvedere. Over here, that square. And this one here, which is a real stunner. That's Joanne Trace from Omaha, Nebraska, down here. Who's this? Mary Pithel from Grand Island. Can't read that. That's the green square. And then we've got um, this one here, Jean Stauffer from Lincoln has made this square. So if, if it's one of you has made one of these squares, although I think it's, it's a vintage one, it's quite old, but I would love to know what these ladies, what, what put their, what, what, what they had in common. Why did they, they obviously come from all different places. So what's the story behind this blanket? There is Diane Harris from Norfolk. Beautiful fabric, Diane. And this is Cindy Crixen from Papillon. And then further down, we've got Joan Waldman from Crot Center. I can't read this. But it's a beautiful square. And then here is Laura Fran Frankini in Weisner. It's a beautiful, beautiful blanket. And I feel so blessed that I can give it a new home. Little Arnold from Nun, what? Platte? Is that from the Platte River? That light blue one. And there is one from Desiree L. Clausen, Norfolk. So some of these ladies come from the same place, Norfolk and Papillon, but uh, other ladies are living somewhere completely else. This is Jane Glugosh from Grand Island. And this colorful square comes from Sharon Harden from Gordon. And so on and so on. And I just, this is a huge, a huge, huge blanket. And, um, you know, my plan is these aren't all there's like again the same number of squares just on the other side um I, my plan is to get this properly quilted there is a lady in the nearby town she is offering quilting services what i have to do is to get the filling and 
and the fabric for the back side and i already got the fabric for the back side i just have to iron it all out and i have to get filling and then i have to um like pin it together and then i can bring it to her and then i can choose which quilting motif i would like and then she will do it it will probably cost a fortune but uh, i think it's still worth it because this blanket only cost me 85 us dollars and you would already have to pay more than that for if you would like if you would buy the fabric yeah so um I, I'm amazed. I'm amazed at these works, at, at the works of these ladies. Truly feel blessed. It's a piece which has history, which is... It's about friendship and crafting together. And that's what I really, really love. And it makes me think I would like to do something similar with crochet wouldn't that be nice i haven't made up my mind yet how i will turn this into a crochet idea but let me think what your opinion is about this kind of thing obviously the more people are taking part the more squares you would have to make or the more motives let's say we would all make the same motive and then we would send it, send it on to the next person who will add another motive to each of those. Something like that. I mean, we all want to end up with a blanket. And it's not just one blanket. That would make things easy if it would be just one blanket. Yeah, I'm waffling now. It's just uh, the beginning of an idea. The seed has been planted. <laughs> okay, on to the next incoming. Some of you might know that I've got a Pika Pau Amigurumi collection. And uh, I haven't made those myself. I mean, some I do, but uh, I'm not a huge fan of doing Amigurumi. I do like the look if it's Pika Pau, but it's a lot of work and it gives me a lot of tension in my shoulders. So... Uh, Ah, uh, it's just a cheap excuse for buying finished amigurumi. But I'm telling myself that I'm that I'm also supporting another maker. So let me just show you my newest acquisition for my Pikapau family. It's this beautiful rhino. He has safety eyes. And he has an embroidered vest. He even has thumbs, little thumbs. And he's wearing trousers. And he's even wearing underpants. <laughs> Colorful underpants. And uh, yes, that came from a maker in Germany here. But if you check on other makers, um, there are lots of people who are crocheting using the books and patterns by Pika Pau or from Pika Pau. And um, I'm sure that many of you have made one or two animals, Pika Pau animals as well. I really adore these little friends. So my collection is made out of a cheetah, a rhino, a lion, uh, a zebra, and a gazelle. I just had to check. And I can't say which is my favorite because they're all so cute. And they're all friends and they are together sitting over there behind me in that corner there, all on a cushion. You've seen them in the intro video. So, uh, yeah. I intend to make uh, more of these animals myself. Although, I doubt that I can be as neat as these makers. Uh, 
What I do find very helpful when it comes to amigurumi is to use not the yarn over method, but the yarn under method. So that the fabric is really tight and the filling doesn't show. And it's a really nice result if you use yarn under instead of yarn over. So that's little rhino. What else can I talk about? So last time I was asking you if you would be interested in having a chat, a Zoom meeting, like a craft night together, a real get together where we can talk about our projects and about our day and uh, I think the feedback I could safely say was very positive and so uh, last minute kind of thing <laughs> I have started a group chat on Instagram where I will inform you about my planned Zoom meetings. This is limited to 40 minute sessions because otherwise I would have to buy a subscription with Zoom or a membership, but I'm not going to do that. We will have 40 minutes each time. And I started last Saturday night. We had a lovely chat. There was Roxanne and there were Marie-Louise and basically the Re Roxanne is from Canada and I'm in Germany and the other ladies were all from South Africa. Uh, I think that was due to the la last minute notice. Not all of you who said they would be interested were there because it was last minute. And then we had another session on Sunday morning and what was very cozy indeed but also very interesting I had me, I was able to talk to Rika, who is currently in India, and also to Sylvia, who is in Australia. And uh, I don't know, it's just so lovely to be able to talk to friends and to, we talked about the weather and we talked about uh, our projects, obviously, but also just, I don't know, it was... I felt it was very relaxed and I enjoyed it very much and I hope that I will see you again at our next meeting. I haven't chosen dates yet but more is coming so I hope that you will join the group chat there because this is where I will publish the dates and the Zoom meetings themselves they are private Zooms. I'm not recording them. I'm not reposting them anywhere. What is said in the Zoom meetings, stays in the Zoom meetings. <laughs> you know, it's just friends meeting friends. Crafting together, chatting together. Oh, by the way, it's not just crochet. We had on Saturday, we had uh, Tiffany was there as well. Sorry, Tiffany, if I didn't mention you just now. Tiffany is the seamstress who made my Edwardian outfit. So it's not limited to crochet or not even limited to crochet knitting or yarny things. All the crafts are welcome. And uh, Tiffany was working on a lovely dress with beads, lots of beads, hard work. And I hope that you will be there in our next Zoom meeting. And who knows what we will be talking about. Uh, I'm open, open to suggestions. And with that, there's not much else. Let me think for a moment. I've got the notice that my Murid magazine is on its way now, the newest issue. So once that arrives, I will show you a little bit. Not everything. You have to buy it if you want to have it all. And uh, oh, I watched this morning a special episode from Kate, who is the last Homely House channel host. And she posted an episode with her son. Um, he was putting together a quilt and it was so much fun. Uh, 
it was like a, his name is John and uh, he's quite a relaxed guy so when his mother and uh, his wife aka the daughter-in-law of uh, Kate they were making making a video about how time consuming or how long it takes them to decide on the positioning of the patchwork squares <laughs> he just <laughs> he came there and just did it like that in, in a few seconds and there, bang, done. <laughs> so uh, what Kate with, did then was to take a photo of his arrangement and then she prepared everything. She called him, she asked him around and now he's putting this together the way he suggested it. Uh, it there were some issues with seam allowances and then it kind of was too short on one end but they are inventive they are going with the flow and it's quite a lot of fun watching the two of them or the three of them to uh, see how they are working together on that family patchwork and I believe it could very well be their favorite and most loved patchwork blanket at the end because uh, there are always memories involved in these projects and in this case special memories of lots of laughter and shenanigans. Yeah, not much else to talk about. I hope that you are having a relaxing weekend and that I will see you soon again. Bye bye, keep well, keep safe. Mm -hmm.